would like to find the volume of the solid obtained by revolving the area shown here, the one bounded by the curves x cubed equals y squared, which is an implicit graph, x equals 0, y equals 4, and everything in the first quadrant, I want to rotate it around the line x equals negative 1. We can do this multiple ways, but this time we're going to do it using cylindrical shells. To set up the cylindrical solids model, we need to take our figure and draw a rectangle in the figure that is parallel to the axis of rotation. In this case, the axis of rotation is horizontal, and so we are going to draw our elements, our rectangles, as horizontal elements. Once we figure out what happens to these as we rotate them around the, um, the line of rotation, we can add these all together with the Riemann sum and end up with an integral that will tell us the volume. So the different y values that we're allowed to use here are y values between 0 and 4, and each of these is going to give rise to one of these elements. When you do rotate this around the line y equals negative 1, what we end up with is a shell shape. This um, I'm going to sketch it here, forgive my poor drawing, but it ends up looking something like this. It is a cylinder with the inside cut out. Now we need the volume of this, and so we need to find the dimensions and figure out how this volume actually works. The different dimensions involved here will come from the function and from the fact that because we're working on the y-axis with y numbers, the element is going to be in terms of delta y. So that will be the thickness of our shell. The width of the shell and the radius of the shell are the other two dimensions we'll need in order to get this to work out. Imagine cutting the, the shell that I have along this line that I drew. What you end up with when you unfold it is something that's a little bit easier to compute a volume of. You can compute volumes of shells, but it's a little bit easier in terms of the dimensions to compute a volume of a shape like this. So you unwrap the shell, you end up with this type of rectangular solid. And so the width of this is delta y, and the other two dimensions are going to come from the radius and from the width of the shell. In particular, we'll need the circumference in order to find one of the dimensions. So the radius, not the radius, the width of the shell is given by the size of the rectangle we started with, and that comes directly from the function itself. So given a y value, we need to figure out how big this rectangle is, and that'll give us the dimension. Now, the function was given to us implicitly, but if you solve for x in terms of y, given a y value, it'll tell you what the width of the rectangle is, how far the function is from the y-axis. And so in this case, the width of our shell is y to the 2 thirds. The radius is going to be given based on how far the rectangle is from the axis of rotation. In this case, the height of the rectangle is y, the axis of the rotation is y equals negative 1, and so the distance between the two is the y to the x-axis plus one more down to the line of rotation. That's going to be y plus 1. And so with these dimensions, we can find the dimensions of the rectangular solid. This y to the 2 thirds is one of the sides, and so I'll make it the, the shorter side because that's what it looks like it should be. The longer side is going to come from the circumference of the solid that I have here. And because the radius is y plus 1, the circumference will be 2 pi times y plus 1. So with these three dimensions, we can find the volume of this solid. And I will just write it down here. For any particular y value between 0 and 4, the volume is given by the three dimensions multiplied together. y to the 2 thirds times 2 pi times y plus 1 times delta y. So now if I take all of these and I add them together and then take a limit, what I end up with is the integral. The y values I was working with was 0 to 4. I'll pull the 2 pi out and they end up with y to the 2 thirds times y plus 1 dy. So if I can find this inter integral, I can find the volume. So to solve this integral, I'm going to distribute the y to the 2 thirds into the two parts. When I do that, 
I end up with an easier integral to actually evaluate. So this will give me 2 pi times the integral from 0 to 4 of y to the 5 thirds plus y to the 2 thirds, all with respect to y. Each of these is just the power of y, and so the antiderivative is nice and easy to find. We add 1 to the exponent and we divide by that higher number. So I get y to the 8 thirds over 8 thirds, which is 3 eighths y to the 8 thirds, and the same type of thing here. It'll be 3 fifths y to the 5 thirds. And we're going to evaluate this between 0 and 4. When you plug in 0, nothing happens. You get 0 for both of your different parts. And so, in order to actually evaluate this, I'm just going to plug in 4. So I get the exact number, 2 pi times 3 eighths times 4 to the 8 thirds, plus 2 pi again, we distribute the 2 pi in, times 3 fifths to, times 4 to the 5 thirds. This will be the exact answer. Um, that's not really a good way to simplify this in a meaningful way. So if we want a decimal approximation, just to get an idea of what the answer is, you can plug this into a calculator or something, and you end up with approximately 132.994.